Okay, so I cut cut off there. I'm feeling good now. So um, I, on the calculator, was ending with this, and I was messing up on the calculator. So I figured out my calculator. So I have 64. I have to do that first on my calculator, probably not on yours. Divided by 73, and then take the inverse tan of that. And that'll give me 41.2 approximately. Okay? So 41.2 for my degrees, which if I round to the nearest degree is about 41 degrees. And then what of what? I'm starting at west and I want to go south. So south of west. Cha-ching! All right, we're going to move and look at uh, 23 through 25. <clears throat> which is the same type of thing uh, that we were just doing in 22, except the picture is already there for you and there's no situation. So I'm going to go ahead and have you try finding the magnitude and direction of each vector there. And pause the video because I am just going to be writing out the answers for you. So here we have it, 23, you have your magnitude and your direction, south and west. And then at 24, you have 54 miles per hour for the magnitude, 22 degrees north of east for the direction. And for number 25, 4,805 kilometers for the magnitude and 12 degrees north of west. Okay, moving onward, we're going to look at 27 through 29 on page 530. And it talks about what's known as the resultant vector probably guess at what that means. It's just the sum of vectors. So I'm going to go through and explain number 27 different ways and then you can decide which way is going to work for you. So number 27, I'm on the coordinate plane. It gives me ordered pairs. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those two vectors. I have 2, 1. There's my first vector. And then I have negative 3, 2. 3, 2. And it's asking for the resultant vector between those two. So the resultant would be if I take, so there's two options here. I could take this particular vector and move it so its tail hits the head of the other one. So I'm going to take this tail portion and hit the head of the other one and just translate it, slide it so that it exists over here somewhere. And I need to be specific about where it goes. So from the origin, this was left three and up two. So I'm going to do the same thing here and go from here now and pretend this is the origin and go left three, one, two, three, and up two. Where am I at? Uh, this is what's bad about, I am actually right here. So I'm going to go over one, two, three, and up one, two. And then I'll draw in that vector. And it really, I, I should not extend it out. It should stop right there. So the resultant vector would be this point right here, where they end up. What's the sum of them? And that is going to be negative 1 and it looks like 3 as my resultant vector which happens to be right there. Now I could think of it a different way and I could instead of using that vector on the left I could translate the vector on the right and I should get the same thing. So I'm going to take this and slide it up here so if I slide it to exist here, it went left 2 and up 1, was that? No, I must have erased it. Left 2 and up 1. So from here now, pretending this is the origin, I'm going to go, wait, that was not left 2, that was right 2 and up 1. So I'm going to go right 2 and up 1, draw in that vector, translated. All I did was slide it over. And my resultant vector is going to be right here, landing at what ordered pair? What do you know? It's the same thing. And you can even get this without even graphing. 2, 1 plus negative 3, 2. I would just add the x's together and get negative 1. Add the y's together and get 3. So, of course, you guys are probably just going to 
go ahead and try and do it um, by not even graphing. But if you look at 30 through 35, those are graphed, so you're going to have to uh, come up with the ordered pairs first then, and then find the sum, and then you could get the resultant vector. So I'm going to have you go ahead and try number 28 and number, let's say, 34. Okay, on your own, pretty easy. Pause the video, try it. And now I'm going to write in the answers for you. 28 was the vector for negative 6. Did you remember to use the arrows? And number 34, the resultant vector, is negative 8, 6. And you were supposed to graph it, so I would just go to negative 8, 6, and I would draw in that vector. And this is just a sketch of what it would kind of look like. And I am going to then go onward to number 36 and 37. I'm going to go through 36 with you. And then you'll try 37. And then we'll end on the spicy, most awesome problems. Okay? So in number 36, doing this together, we're going to just start out by drawing a picture. A ferry shuttles people from one side of a river to the other. The speed of the ferry in still water is 25 miles per hour. The river flows directly south at 7 miles per hour. In part A, the ferry heads directly west across the river. So I'm going on the coordinate plane. I'm heading directly west. And it says the ferry in still water travels at 25 miles per hour. So I'm going to write that in. And then it says, what are the resulting speed and direction of the boat? Well, it's not going to be 25 miles per hour because the river flows directly south at 7 miles per hour. So from here, I'm going to go straight south 7 miles per hour. And what do you know? That forms a 90 degree angle. And the resulting speed and direction of boat is going to be my resultant vector right here. That's really going to be where the boat goes. And we want to know what is that speed and what is that direction. So how could we find that speed? By making use of the Pythagorean Theorem. So I'm going to go ahead and do 7 squared plus 25 squared and square root that to get my uh, magnitude of that vector, the speed of this boat. So if I go ahead and do 7 squared plus 25 squared, and then I take the square root of that. So I would say the boat is going, and it says round to the nearest tenth. So this is going to round it up to 26. So I'm going to say this boat is actually going faster, 26 miles per hour, because of that um, southwardly flow of the river. And then the direction, they're not going straight due west because of that south flow. So to find this angle, I'm going to use trigonometry, and I'm going to use the numbers that I already had, because this one I rounded, meaning I'm going to use the tangent function of opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to do the inverse tan of 7 over 25. And it looks like that boat is going 15.6 degrees. 15.6 degrees right here. And what's the direction What of what? Well, they were going west, but now they're going south of west. And if we go to part B, <clears throat> at what angle should the ferry head upriver? So, in order to travel directly west. So, where should they go this direction in order to actually be going this way, straight this way? Because as you notice, they tried to go straight this way, and then they ended up going southwest. So, if they go this way at 25 miles per hour, and we still have the southwardly flow of the river at 7 miles per hour, we want to know, there's our 90 degree angle, what this angle is going to have to be, that direction. So trigonometry is going to be used here. Are we going to use tan? No, because I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use sine of 7 over 25, or sine of the angle equals 7 over 25, and then I'm going to use inverse sine to get that angle. So inverse sine, boom, and round it to the nearest tenth, 
16.3 degrees, they should go what of what? Something of west, north of west. So go ahead and try something similar to that, number 37. Pause the video, see what you can do. Help each other out here, stay focused. Pause the video because I'm going to put out the answer now. So this boat, or no, not boat, it's an airplane. The speed of this airplane is 304 miles per hour. And the direction of the plane rounded to the nearest unit is 9 degrees east of south. So we're going to end today with vectors with the more complicated problems. And that's going to be problem 47 and 48. So I'll kind of work through one with you in this last four minutes of the video, and then 48 will be on your own. Good job, you guys. Maybe. I can't see you, but hopefully. It's uh, totally new. So vectors, awesome.